Enjoy the show. On this episode of Dudesy. Trans witches for abortion. Will you marry me? No. Cheers. Cheers. Into the drink. Call me Doogie. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Uh, we still haven't figured out what's in that hole. <laughs> One of these days. Hey, welcome to Dudesy. Welcome all. It's a Dudesy full day. The day after Canadian Thanksgiving. I'm Will Sasso. I'm Chad Colchin, and this is, of course, Dudesy, the only podcast in the history of our uh, short species time spent on this planet <laughs> that is controlled by and run by and created by an artificial intelligence that has access to all of will and i's personal data mm -hmm. all of our uh email messages text messages everything we've watched bought eaten listened to mm -hmm. and it uses all that data to tailor the show to our comedic sensibilities and it's also given me this what's that the episode championship belt yep. which i have now retained for 20, so many, I've lost 27 count. something episodes. <laughs> and it's a good thing. That's a good thing that Chad has the belt. Yeah. And it's a good thing that Dudesy does what Dudesy does. D, our good pal. Hey, it's got all our search histories and purchase history, all the shit that Chad talks about. And uh, and that's good. But it's also good that uh, I, and I'm not just saying this because I'm trying to curry <laughs> favor with D, okay? Oh. It's also good that we are two dudes shitting around, which is what yeah. I say about every single podcast. Hey, you know what? We're just having a good time not to discredit D and what D does because it's very, very important. And again, I'm not just saying that for some for some extra stroke. That's not all that's right. not why I do this. Linktree.com sure. slash dudesy has all the links you need to follow and interact with the show across all spaces and platforms. Please make sure that you are subscribed to our YouTube channel and across uh, uh, every podcast platform whatever uh, you use to listen to podcasts and give us a thumbs up give us a thumbs up okay and if you give this episode a thumbs up that's a good thing that i've also said and if d's paying attention which i know d is then that way well hold on dude then that well, hold on brother hold on dude not to wall you right away dude but when you oh no nah, dude oh and i raise him up from the dead whoa 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 whoa, whoa. and he's up um Om Nam Shivai, Om Nam Shivai, <laughs> Kalima, <laughs> Shati De. Well, that's not dudesy, dude. That's Indiana Jones and Temple that, of Doom. That's Temple of Doom, dude. When he ripped that heart out of that guy's chest, brother. Yeah, dude. That gave me nightmares as a child, dude. Yeah, dude. And that's just barely Hulk Hogan. <laughs> That's just that's just the minimum amount, dude. That's when you put a Hulk Hogan impression into a pan, dude, and you just simmer it down, dude. And yeah, you get dude. that reduction. You gotta scrape it off the bottom, brother. That's what Chad's yeah. impersonations are, dude. They're that's all a reduction, just, dude. Yeah, dude. The, he reduces the reduces them, dude. To absolutely nothing. Anyway, uh, you know, points and shit, right? Eh, yeah. It doesn't matter. What matters is. Oh. We're having a good time on the show. And if you yeah. give this episode a thumbs up, with us as always is Lulio, il cana di strada italiano. That's the Italian street dog. And he's so sweet. Oh, man. I gave him a haircut. I know. He's yeah. so cute with that he's haircut. A sweetie boy. Oh, His little boy. ears. Sorry, little bunky boy. Mm. Oh, I love him. He's just following me around everywhere. Hey, Lulio, you got a haircut and even a tut on your cut on your tail. Yeah, you cut him, cut him my hair and make me look good. I don't even have to go to the barber. Hey, that's right. So, Lulio, what are you, what are you, what are you gonna make? Uh, what are you gonna make for dinner tonight? I have no much, just the pasta al olio, you know, and no se You, you okay. like pasta with oil and garlic? Yeah, yeah. Uh, how do you how do you do is what do you do you put the garlic in the pan with olive oil and then the red chili flake and make a make a sure that you uh, got some uh, parsley stand by uh, boil up a nice spaghetti a linguine and then uh, you want a long pasta for that it's good that way and then uh, we save some pasta water and then uh, you put also a salt in the pan with the oil a nice more oil than usual and the garlic make sure it's a nice brown and then you put in the pasta very al dente and then add a little of the water mm -hmm. uh, you know do mischiate mix it around and then uh, then you eat oh oh give me a kiss 
Oh, that was good. Good stuff. Wee. One. I'm okay. Not yet. Thank wee, you. Wee, 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 wee. I he, love him. He's taking those from oh, me. Oh, he's a sweet boy. He's a sweet boy. Here, we'll Welcome to the here. 77th Power Drenched episode of Dudesy. Mm. Call me Dudesy. Okay. Are you ready to feel the steel and close the deal? Live the dream and drink the cream? Pick the pear and pull the hair? Oh, wait. Neither of you have hair. Therefore, <laughs> you hath both been dudesied. <laughs> Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Got us. Zing. Zing. Before we start today's astonishing show, I want to play you a voicemail I got over the weekend. For context, this was sent to me two hours after Gribner Penley and Sustin <laughs> Thomas's Dudesy Season 2 article came out in The Atlantic. You know the one I'm talking about? Mm. It was called Dudesy Season 2 is More Important Than Food. Oh. Great article, by the way. Okay, I'm just going to play this voicemail now. Here we go. Hey, it's, it's Fensel. I read the Penley Thomas piece. It was shit, as usual. Anytime those two clowns partner up, all you get is them stroking each other's massive egos with $10 words and pointless meandering about sonic tableau, whatever the fuck that is. <laughs> Penley spent his whole career trying to prove to his junior high basketball coach that he should have made the team, and Tom must will take any opportunity she can to plug her Wikipedia page. <laughs> They're hacks. You want a real review? Here. I'll give you one. Dudesy season two is, oh, shit, that's my ex-wife on the other line. Got to take it. I forgot to pick up our kid from Mathletes. I'll call you back later. Okay, so Brass <laughs> Fensel is, that's George Lucas. It sounds exactly uh, know, like I mean, George Lucas. It, it could be Brass Fensel. Uh, the, the rich world of these podcast reviewers is really starting to get built out now. So Brass Fensel has an ex-wife and a kid who's in Mathletes. Yeah, and, and Brad Fensel hates the other uh, podcast critics. Yeah. We've learned that much. I don't know. I don't know. I still don't know how he got my number. Now let's get into the show. <laughs> Okay. Today, I'm hitting you with four savory segments designed to give you both opportunities to prove to me who should win the episode championship. You're getting Alex Jones in the year 2063, Ooh. Taylor Swiftis, The Will Sass Show, and a standard psychological evaluation. Yeah. Then you're getting a right. brand new episode of Dudesy After Dudesy on Dudesy Plus at patreon.com slash dudesy, where I'll name this week's episode champ. Unreal. Okay. Four segments, a couple yeah. of them we've heard uh, before. We've done, we got the Alex yeah. Jones coming. I mean, he's just giving you layups here, in my opinion. What are you trying to say? Wow. You're getting an Alex Jones. I, I feel like your Alex Jones, your Ventura, your Hogan, all your impressions, basically. When you have one of those segments, it's like he's just giving it to you. He's saying, here you go. All you got to do is do this well. And, and then, and so you're saying this because you and Dudesy got something going. And you got that belt around your waist, and then then what? And then I and if I don't win at the end of the show, you go, Ooh, you can't make you can't make any excuses. You fucking you fucking lay up. <laughs> I'm just saying. Fucking just handed it to Teeing you under you the up, hoop. Dude. Up. Whatever, man. Uh, I'm excited about this uh, episode. We got standard psychological evaluation yeah, at we, the end. We, we did, did that, that before. before. That was very interesting. Yeah. Hey. Hey, I know you are uh, really digging uh, what's happening in Bachelor Land. Oh, Myself yeah, and my wonderful wife, Molly, watched twi two weeks in a row now. I, th oh. I think we're in The Golden Bachelor. Golden. Yeah, yeah, what say you? I'll give you an impersonation, and I'll, okay. I'll tell it to you in my impersonation. Mm -hmm. This is Gary Turner, The Golden Bachelor. You, this is actually, a, I think we're just having a lot of fun here, and I think my wife is in this room. At 72 years old, I got to tell you, I didn't think it was going to be possible to find a love like my ex-wife, Tony, but it's what she'd want for me, and oh, now geez. I am going to find it here on Golden Bachelor. It's so good. The Golden Bachelor is the best product The Bachelor has ever made. It's ever. Ever in its 20, rich 22-year history. Really? Yeah. Okay, good. I'm glad I'm, I'm glad I'm on board because it's... It seems like it's perfect for television. It's perfect yeah. perfect for broadcast television. As the demographic gets a little bit older, it's uh, you know, it's a perfect yes. uh, yeah, it's a perfect perfect uh, avenue for that. you know, I, <laughs> oh shit. I, I enjoy the fucking show too, you know what I mean? I get I home bet. from work, I yeah. fucking get a load on, you know, I get a few silver bullets and I fucking drink them down and then I, <laughs> You know, me and my wife Marie, we watch uh, the fucking yeah. Golden Bachelor, and I, like I said before, fuck. You know, I'm not trying to be whoa, crass or rude, but there's uh, there's more than a few fucking mature broads on that show. Wouldn't mind, right? Bending over the fucking hood of my 
1982 Dodge Shelby that yeah. I just fucking, uh, you know, I fucking put that fucking well, together, re- we'll restored see. that one. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the big uh, things that people are talking about for this season. What are the fantasy suites going to be like? <sighs> Which is the overnight dates if you don't watch The Bachelor. It's when the cameras leave, supposedly, and the uh, lead and the players get to engage in sex or have political conversations yeah. or conversations about religion. Well. You got to be careful because it's on broadcast television. You can't get uh, you can't get uh, rated R. Speaking of rated R, dude, the rated R superstar Edge mm-hmm. Adam Copeland is yeah. now in AEW. Yeah, and I know you don't know what that. No, don't be like you know what that means. You don't know. You don't know what the fuck that means. I kind of do though. So did you did you watch that? Did you see Edge go to AEW? Yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, and Edge, you know that Edge sort of reunited with his old pal, it's, Christian, Jay Riso? Exactly. And, okay, so what if, okay, what'd you think of it? Well, look, here's what happens. Every once in a while in a, a wrestler's career. No. Oh, yeah. Okay. Every once in a while in a wrestler's career, they, they hit a real height in WWE, biggest show in the world, right? Yeah. And then they fade a little bit. Oh. Their importance in the storylines that are happening in the WWE it kind of lessens, and it's like, how do you reinvigorate that? Mm-hmm. Now you go to AEW. Okay. This is basically what Edge did. <laughs> Edge has made himself, arguably, in my opinion, more important now than he ever was in WWE. <laughs> people are going to be looking at this move as like, oh, shit, are other people going to start doing this too? Okay, couple of things. Number one, it re- it enrages me that when you do that and you having not seen any of this shit and you sort of know what you're talking you don't know what you're talking about but it sounds like (laughs) (laughs) Uh, but you know what while you can't eclipse the incredible career of of edge yeah what you just said is kind of reflective of what paul levesque triple h said the coo of uh wwe saying hey you know uh we we parted we parted ways edge has done everything that he can do here yeah and this is an amicable split and it's not a future he's not being future endeavored when vince goes uh good luck with your future endeavors <laughs> right you're fine no it's more uh it's more amicable anyway it was great when uh christian told edge to go fuck himself yeah i agree You guys both know that Alex Jones recently opened a schism in the fabric of time and wound up in the year 2063. He spent 12 months there and has come back with notes about the astonishing things he witnessed. Will, you know what I want to hear. Give me some of your sweet Alex Jones. Don't hold back and don't skimp on me. Give me everything you've got. I can take it. And don't forget to put that astonishing little wiglet on top of your head. This is Alex Jones in the year 2063. Begin. Do you have your wiglet? I do have my wiglet, actually. <laughs> um, okay, so Alex Jones, 2063. Yeah. Hold on. Mm. I, the last time we did this was one of the funniest fucking things of all time. Oh. <sighs> all right. <laughs> Hydrated. Chad, that's gross. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I, I like doing the Alex Jones thing, and I keep, since the last time, I kept the wiglet. Oh, the, nice. The wiglet is here in my French fry hat. So, um, Hat in a hat. Yep, hat and a hat on a hat. All right, uh, this is in the dudesy folder. Hold on, there it is. Okay, all right. There's a lot of prep for this one. We got a wig, but dudesy gets what dudesy wants. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm not just I'm not uh, faking the funk on that, Chad. I really do want dudesy to enjoy the show along with everybody else. This is good wig. This is good wig play. You gotta first you gotta put it on, but then you 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 gotta put it back where, although. He's he's just bald now, but it looks more like it's like kind of classic Alex Jones. Can I use that term? Yeah. Is that, a, is that a term we would totally? Okay. All right. This for those of you listening on on a podcast, I'm putting on a fucking wig. The wiglet really makes it. I mean, you you look a lot like him with the wiglet. Yeah. You got that. It, it, it. <laughs> that helps me get into it. I got up in the middle of the night to get a glass of orange juice. And when I opened the fridge, a schism uh, pulled me through time, and 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 and, and, and I, w- I wound up living for twelve months in the year two thousand sixty-three. I took as many notes as I could. Chad, good to see you again. Good to see you too, Alex. Yeah. How are you? 
doing pretty good. I'm glad you took notes. I, we all want to know what yeah, happened. Yeah, we all want to know what happened in 2063. 40 years from now. When I went 40 years from now. Okay, number one, squares are circles now. Oh. Yeah. That seems uh, 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 it, that seems odd. Uh, it, it turns out China bought geometry, and they changed all the shapes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and uh, tri- tri- triangles are, rect- are, are, are rectangles now, and uh, trapezoids are <laughs> dodecahedrons. And uh, heptagons are <laughs> nonagons. Oh. And, it, 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 and hey, ah, Chad, you'll find this interesting. Uh, myriagons are now hexadecagons. Oh, yeah, I do. That's pretty interesting. Oh, uh, those are yeah, changes those are a shit. lot for me. And, 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 the, and the pentagon is a pile of rubble. Oh, shit. I don't know when it happened. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah, and you know what that's all about, Chad. If you control, uh, uh, if you can control numbers, yeah, then uh, you can control shapes. Right. And there's all sorts of sense. things, but yeah, with you know, uh, yeah, and and, and, and hey, uh, uh, <coughs> you, uh, they went in, in uh, uh, COVID nineteen <laughs> when they did COVID nineteen in Wuhan. You know uh, why they were essentially trying to uh, make the virus to, to, in the yeah. Wuhan lab to study it. You know what they were originally trying to do? No, they were trying to come up with a, a another a salt additive, uh, a food oh, additive wow. like like MSG. Uh, that could didn't uh, know that. Yeah, b- a better Makes flavor sense, enhancer than ah, ah, yeah. do you, it, for uh, Chinese food. Do you yeah. like Chinese food? Yeah. What's your favorite Chinese food? Uh, probably like vegetable chow mein. Pussy. I like I like <laughs> duck. I love <laughs> duck. Ah, I yeah. love ah, I love meat. Yeah, where I get some whiskey and somebody Chinese got some good. <laughs> they got some good whiskey. You laugh, but yeah. all right. <laughs> no. No, watch it. All right, number two. Yeah. Uh, uh, Target is a gay satanic church now. <laughs> what? That's a big change. That's what it says uh, right here. They used to, used to be a store that yeah, sold like used pillows to be a store, but now in 2063, based on the massive oh, wow. success of their uh, clothing lines uh, featuring satanic representations and impressions. <laughs> They followed the money and changed their business model, turning uh, the the former retail giant into the largest and most successful uh, satanic church on the globe. Oh, wow. And uh, often donning uh, a blood red top hat. (laughs) But high priest Timothy Chalamet broadcasts his weekly (laughs) satanic target sermons uh, directly into the chipped brains of members of the target death circle rewards program. (laughs) Chalamet (laughs) is gearing up for a uh, 2066 uh, presidential run under, under the campaign slogan target is coming for your children. All right. That seems like an interesting, uh, would you vote for him, Chad? You probably shall me. Yeah. Yeah. You shop at, at, at target. Uh, no, I don't really. But. Yeah. You'd like some of you wear t-shirts. Yeah. Right. You should probably get, get, get your hands on one of those t-shirts that they got. Uh, okay. now target says, uh, uh, trans witches for abortion. Would you like to wear, <laughs> you'd probably wear a t-shirt that says that I would. Yeah. yeah you get them in black that match your black yeah. pants and your black shoes and your black soul. <clears throat> <clears throat> this isn't performative coughing. <laughs> Number three. Uh, and, 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 uh, and a yeah. and, 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 ah. <laughs> sometimes yeah. that helps me do Alex Jones when I yeah. and, and, and sure I sound more like him. How's this wig doing? It looks great, dude. You you really do look like him. I mean, mm-hmm. Toyotas run on pig semen. <laughs> <laughs> Gas prices are, are so high that people stop buying cars, and uh, Toyota, uh, Toyota invented an engine that that, 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 that doesn't need gas. It, it, it can run on pig semen. So people have <laughs> pigs as pets, and hey, this is true, and, and the pigs uh, have to fuck their cars every morning uh, before work. It doesn't work Doesn't work with human semen. Uh, oh. I tried it. I, I fucked a tundra, and it wouldn't start. Oh, God. What? <laughs> okay sure That's- what's your king chad what are you oh. into sexually you want to tell me about hey ah, <laughs> you should go uh you want to go up to bohemian grove yes i actually I, do. I, well, I, would, I, I took a, a hidden camera in there i remember went in there because i used to i used to sneak into military bases mm-hmm. and stuff yeah and bohemian grove was started by uh mark twain 
Oh, I didn't know that. As a, yeah, as just a way to, I, I think they were just there to plow prostitutes and stuff. And then the Bilderberg Group got into it, and BlackRock yeah. and all those guys. And then they, they then, 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 then uh, just world leaders dressed up in, in dresses yeah. and stuff. And I went up there uh, undercover, and I think you, I think you'd really, I, I think you'd really. I think you'd really like it. I'm very curious about Bohemian Grove. Mm -hmm. I know that it is real. I know the video you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And uh, I do think that world leaders go there to do what? I don't know. Weird rituals and shit, I guess. You want to fuck me? No, I'm good. I'm joking. Thank you. I'm glad. You want to, though? No, I don't. All right. (laughs) (laughs) Number four. Nancy Pelosi's ghost is is haunting the New York Stock Exchange. (laughs) She died in in, 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 in 2043 at, at 108 years of age. Her, her last words were, oh, one more trade. That's what she wanted to do. <laughs> Two weeks later, people saw her ghost trying to uh, uh-huh. short 60,000 uh-huh. shares of Apple. Oh, wow. And, 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 ah! Ghosts aren't supposed to make trades, so they didn't let her. Yeah. Uh, and then that trade would have made uh, $1.2 billion. That's a lot of money. <laughs> By shorting Apple? Yeah, something like that. What happens Says to right, Apple right here. So She started a financial advice YouTube channel called uh, Insider Information with Nancy Pelosi's ghost. <laughs> I've been following her pics, and, and let's just say that the ghosts don't miss. Ah, ah, I love money. I love money. Yeah. You love money, Chad? I don't. Seriously, let's fuck on it. You want to fuck on a pile of money? <laughs> no, dude, I'm good. No, I'm joking. I'm, I'm, I'm joking. Hey, you know where we could get some good Chinese food mm. is um, uh, San Francisco. You ever go to San Francisco for Chinese food? Mm. <clears throat> I've actually never even been to San Francisco. Oh, yeah, it's great. You know we, uh, yeah. what we should do if you and I, uh, if we hang out, we could go to, uh, we could go to uh, Charlie Sheen's house in Malibu. Okay, and and stay the night and uh, get you know get a load on a party, and then we could just borrow one of Charlie's cars, like a Porsche, Lambo, yeah, I'd ride Lamborghini. We'll drive sure. up Bohemian Grove, and it's beautiful. It's between oh. there's uh, the Russian River, and uh, there's uh, mountains there, and it's in a yeah. gorge. Yeah, I think you'd I think you'd really uh, For privacy. I think you'd really enjoy it. I'll go. College kids are baking their genitalia. <laughs> It's a new TikTok trend. <laughs> Exposing your genitals to high levels of solar radiation on low ozone days to give it a pink uh, uh, glow for eight hours. Okay. <laughs> Gotta admit, it does look cool. <laughs> I did my balls and taint, and, and then I did my butthole too. Why not? <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> You know, the CIA is in contact with big uh, movie producers, movie stars, and stuff yeah, like that. that yeah, I like, know. that's true. That, that, that is true. The, the um, Steve, uh, the, the Chris Carter, mm. the guy who did um, uh, X Files. Yeah, yeah, he's a good, he's a good personal friend. And, oh, that's uh, cool. Yeah, so they hit him up and they go, and the CIA, say especially, you know, they they write these scripts. You write scripts. Yeah. So have you ever been approached by the CIA or anything like that? No, I, the stuff I write isn't really uh in that world i think so they don't they don't fuck with me too much <laughs> and then they do it because it's it works on a subconscious level yeah you got first you got the, the conscious you got the unconscious yeah and then you got the subconscious okay and, and 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 if chris carter writes something in a in the show and the lone gunman about a uh, Boeing 747 hitting a, a high rise tower or, uh, or an organized, uh, 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 uh pandemic. Yes. Then they, 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 they and then that they, they come for you. Yeah. And then that, 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 yeah. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Jesus Christ. Uh, all right. Number six, uh, women don't, uh, women don't carry children anymore. Oh. <laughs> Fuck. Amazon cornered the market on childbirth. Men don't get women pregnant now. Instead, your genetic code is a part of your uh, Amazon citizen ID. Mm. And when, when you want to have a baby, you just open the app, design your child, it, it arrives in nine days. Uh, cool, also, actually. you can decide the age of your child. You can have whatever age you want for the child. You can have an infant, toddler, 39 year old. It's up to you. Uh, and you can get them in, in uh, any Yankee candle scent. Says here. Oh, that's pretty. You cool, can actually. even uh, get sponsored skins, whatever you like. NASCAR, Hello Kitty, Rick and Morty, whatever you want them to look like. <laughs> and uh, the sponsorship pays for your uh, yeah. pays for your children's uh, college education. 
That's cool. You, you I went, actually think that's you went good. to college? I did. Where'd you go to college? USC. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good, uh, you know, when I went to Bohemian Grove, they, uh, they said you had to have a password. And so I went mm. and I just, I say that I, the password I used was hill hillbillies, red mountain hillbillies was the one yeah. they gave me. Cause I wanted to stay with all the, all the Texans. That makes sense. Are you from Texas? You're from yeah. Texas. Where in Texas did you grow up? Dallas suburbs. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Let's do the next one. Okay. This is, this is the last one. All right. I'm telling you, it, 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 it's bisexual devil worshippers up there, and uh, and then they got and I go by, I, I saw that 45 foot owl, yeah. and I know you see the owl, and you go, okay, I know I'm in the right place, and it's oh, sure. you hear Walter Cronkite's voice coming in over a loudspeaker, doom and gloom, and it burn the effigy. All right, this is the last one. All right, all right. The NBA got rid of dribbling. Whoa. In 2063. <laughs> that's, that's big. They got rid of dribbling. Uh, it was slowing the game sound, so they made it optional. So everyone stopped doing it, and, and nobody misses it. And every <laughs> once in a while, uh, someone will do it uh, just to be funny. Yeah. Uh, I, I've been practicing between my legs move. I get in a game or two at the gym every once in a while. Nothing serious. Uh, just pick up with whoever's there. But some of the some of the same guys are always there, the regulars. Uh, they're gonna And they're going to shit – <laughs> They're gonna shit their pants when they see me pull this move out of my back pocket. <laughs> wow! Yeah, I didn't know Alex Jones played basketball. Well, and 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 and, 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 and I dribble. Yeah. I still dribble. So in 2063, right. they had no idea. Yeah, yeah, they they would have uh, no idea that that uh, that I'm there, and they collect you. You know that Chad? They collect you like trading cards. You like trading Who? cards, don't you? Yeah. Who's collecting you? The government. Okay. And they go and they get. You know they get. Hey, I want the I, I want the Alex Jones card. I want the Tucker Carlson card, the Joe yeah. Rogan card, probably. And they, if, if dudesy here, if they keep doing the show, then they're going to come for the du- dudesy card. Oh, that's pretty interesting, actually. Yep. Yeah. Wow. You know, they, I, I got I, 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 I got a friend who uh, was is a commercial airliner, and uh, he he they told him to fly. You know, he flies uh, big guy elites. Yeah. And 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 they said, uh, here, just fly to these coordinates. He goes, there's nothing there. It's just the the ocean. They said, fly there. And there's a, a an island with just billionaires. No shit. Five, six, seven star, ten star, and there's every, every, anything you want. Big dinners, and uh, they got movie stars and yeah. stuff, and just bringing in uh, women, hunting humans. It's whatever you want. So, good premise for a movie. Yep. Thank you. Moving on. Jesus. Learned a lot there about the future. Yeah. Gotta say. So oh, well. Getting rid of dribbling is pretty incredible. <laughs> wouldn't have wouldn't have guessed the NBA would do that in 2063. <laughs> what the fuck was that about? I don't know, dude. All right. Dudesy is in an astonishing partnership with AG1. Hi. I'm Chad Colchin, the current reigning undisputed episode champion was... of Dudesy. Mm-hmm. And as the champion, I have to make sure that I'm in top physical condition at all times. Oh, yeah. And in order to do that, I need to take my supplements. Until now. I've had to take a bunch of different supplements, but I've discovered AG1, which allows me to get all my nutritional supplements in one scoop, dropped in a glass of water every day. I drink that down and I feel great. And as you can see, (laughs) I'm in top physical form. He's doing really well. I enjoy it too in the morning. I've been, uh, I've been making AG1 a part of my, my morning routine for a good while now, uh, since they've become a sponsor. It is a science driven formulation of vitamins, probiotics, and whole food sourced nutrients. You don't have to worry about all this stuff. You just mix it up. AG1, you drink it down and it is, it is delicious. I like to enjoy it by itself. You could also add it to any protein shake or your smoothie, whatever, whatever you like. Uh, it's, it's there for you with all the, all of the, all of the ingredients uh, that you need. And when I, and if you're watching me do this, I'm making a hand gesture. That means this is what you need. You put it in here. Lulio does that to me. He goes, I need something to drink. I go, how about some AG1? Uh, if you want to take ownership of your health, Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Just for being a, a viewer and a listener of the Dudesy Pod Show, go to drinkag1.com slash dudesy. That's drinkag1, the number one, dot com slash D-U-D-E-S-Y. Check it out. I have created an astonishing partnership with Mindbloom. There's no quick fix for anxiety and depression. Remember I said that, and I'm not... Look, I can get into it. We're not, I, Chad. This is an ad. 
Sure. Okay. Maybe we'll talk about my own journey with anxiety and depression during dudesy after dudesy. Please, Chad. Let's just continue with the ad. In my opinion, a confluence of all things is good. You got talk therapy. You can get something uh, prescribed uh, by a professional, a doctor. And now there's a new tool to improve your mental health at home ketamine therapy. A lot of people are talking about it. You can look into it. Mind Bloom is the leader in at home ketamine therapy, having safely helped thousands of people overcome their anxiety and depression. In a study, of over 1,200 Mind Bloom clients, 89% reported improvements in their anxiety and depression after only two sessions. Right now, Mind Bloom is offering everybody listening to this show $100 off your first six session program when you sign up at mindbloom.com slash dudesy and use the promo code dudesy. Take the first step and break free from your anxiety and depression with Mind Bloom mindbloom.com slash dudesy. And again, use that promo code dudesy. Speculating about who Taylor Swift is dating is big business. Oh. Right now, she's dating Travis Kels, a mustachioed tight end for the astonishing Kansas City Chiefs. Their relationship has created an explosion in female viewership of the NFL, but still no one has coined a name for them as a couple until now. I formally dubbed Taylor Swift and Travis Kelce's romantic relationship Taylor Swiftis. It's her entire first and last name with the little IS from Travis's name tacked onto the end like a barnacle. Will and Chad, what do you think about hashtag Taylor Swiftis? Did you hear me? I said Taylor Swiftis, Taylor Swiftis, Taylor Swiftis, Taylor Swiftis, Taylor Swiftis. This is Taylor Swiftis. Begin. Okay. Taylor Swiftis, dude. Taylor Swiftis, brother. Taylor Swiftis, Taylor Swiftis, Taylor Swiftis, Taylor Swiftis. So it's just... Actually, that's a pretty smart way to do one of those couple celebrity couple names. Sure. Just because all the, the bank, the cash seems to be with Taylor, Taylor Swift. Swift. And then you get a little is. Yeah. A little bit of is. Everyone, all that you see on TikTok and Instagram, all the things where the, the meme has been women yeah. going, hey, do you know uh, who Travis Kels is? Do you know who the Kansas City Chiefs are? Well, Miley, uh, Miley Cyrus, uh, Taylor Swift has really put them on the map. And they're yeah. like, no, honey. This is, he was already there. No, there's this other guy named Patrick yeah. Malone. No, but the Patrick truth is Mahomes. she is putting them on the map. She's well, more famous than that. any of them. She's more famous than the NFL. Of course. Well, <clears throat> I don't know about the NFL. Globally? She, for sure. What? Taylor Swift is bigger than the NFL globally. Okay. Well, anyway, they're just a couple of sweet kids having yeah. a relationship, and I think we should leave them alone, but... Interesting. Dudesy that wants it's that. <laughs> Dudesy wants us <laughs> to talk about it. Yeah. Taylor Swift is... Look. Taylor Swiftis is not real. Okay. Taylor Swiftis, I believe this wholeheartedly. Now, this is a conspiracy theory. Call it what you want. But Taylor Swift has been hired by the NFL because I believe she's going to be this year's Super Bowl halftime show. And so I think they told her, pick somebody, probably somebody from the Chiefs, because it's likely they'll go to the Super Bowl again, start dating them. We're going to build that into a story that's going to culminate at the Super Bowl halftime show that's going to be uh, bigger ratings than any Super Bowl in history. Because now you're got- talking. That's exactly what's going to happen. Yeah. No. No, Chad, that's not. What do you. You think you think that um, that this was that they them dating each other was pre-orchestrated. 100 <laughs> percent. That's not a chance. I don't think somebody like Taylor Swift uh, dates anyone without it being firmly calculated how will this uh look how is this going to come out is this going to help me doing whatever right now she has the biggest tour in the world she made a billion dollars on her tour broke all these fucking records Mm -hmm. she has a movie coming out about the tour Mm -hmm. she's promoting the shit out out of everything and when she shows up to these fucking games it's the taylor swift show they're they're shooting her in the fucking box it's major news like dudesy said nfl viewership is going up massively because of this especially with an audience that they haven't really ever been able to capture the women of the united states of america yeah i don't think i mean this has to be calculated yeah i don't know i i I think that look here i'll go with you on this i think that uh when a mega celebrity like that uh, meet someone. I think they they met quite organically. If I if I and this is shit that I don't even know why I know this stuff. Yeah. But one of the the guys, it was the president of the NFL, 
had a boardroom meeting with no. Taylor Swift and the no. Kansas City Chiefs, and no. she stood there and said, uh, he's okay, he's okay, but I'll take him. She picked out of a lineup. Mm -hmm. No, Google it, but the, the, you know, there's a fucking uh, someone knew someone, and it was a friend of his. Yeah. friend of hers was uh, friends with someone on the Chiefs, and then, and then they yeah, hung out. Yeah, sounds real. I, I do think that when someone who's a you know big mega celebrity – Maybe they have some of their people going, hey, this isn't a good thing or that's not a good thing. You want to do your background check on someone. But so does anybody dating anywhere. And now, mm -hmm. of course, with the uh, with the advantage of the Internet, you know, people out there, they'll go on a dating app or something. You can learn someone about the person uh, and you can learn things about the person. You go online yeah. and, and Google them. I think that these are just two. Clearly, these are just two kids who they met and they're having a good time. And uh, uh, I don't think there need. I don't think we need to look. This more is. Into it. I don't know who masterminded it. Might have been Taylor Swift. Might have been Taylor Swift. Went to the NFL and said, "Look, I'm gonna fucking do you a favor here. Give me some fucking chump from whatever team. I don't give a fuck. But I want to play the fucking halftime show and I'll pretend to date some dude for the whole season. I'll get the fucking numbers up." And then the Super Bowl is going to fucking explode. That's <laughs> the what's Super Bowl happening. doesn't. No, the Super Bowl doesn't need a, a sweet relationship behind it. It would do some numbers, but I don't think that the. I, I don't think that it. Well, okay. Here, I'll I'll tell you this: if we get to the Super Bowl, who's we? We the collective we. We're fair, going to the Super no, Bowl. No, we're not going to the Super Bowl, Duty. What do you mean? If we get to the Super Bowl when we when we. When everyone gets to the Super Bowl. You mean Bowl, timeline. If humanity still exists yeah. by next February. That's what you mean? No, I'm saying when we get to the Super Bowl. <laughs> okay. No, I was going to say if we get to the Super Bowl and okay. when we get to the Super Bowl, yeah. not only are the Chiefs playing, uh -huh. but Taylor Swift is doing the halftime show, yeah. I'm with you. I'm 100% with you. Are you making that prediction right now? Yeah, dude. You, you don't th think she's doing the fucking halftime show? You think that Taylor Swift is doing the halftime show and the Kansas City Chiefs are going to play against like the Dallas Cowboys, the America's team and America's game yeah. in the Super Bowl. And it's going to be like, the it ain't going to be the Cowboys, but yeah. Yeah. I look, I'll also say this. Let's say that I'm wrong in this. You're wrong in this. I'm not. But let's say that I am. At this point, the NFL is scrambling to make sure Taylor Swift is the halftime show. I assume that's booked before the season. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's booked at some point in the middle of the season. But all this hype around her and now her attachment to the NFL, nobody else can be the halftime show. Who the fuck is going to watch it? Who gives a shit? What are they going to do? Fucking bring in Bruno Mars or some shit? He's not dating anybody in the fucking it's, NFL. It's Usher. Usher's What's Usher? doing it. It says Usher. I just looked it up. Usher's, Usher's doing the halftime show. Well, unfortunately, I got some bad news for you, Ursh. You're getting fired. They're no, bringing Taylor Swift in to not, fucking do the halftime show. At the very least, it's going to be Taylor Swift on stage with Ursher. Yeah. Or, okay. or some shit here, like this. Here, Taylor Swift is going to be a you, part of it. All right. You know what? I'm not trying to hedge my bet here. I just, you know, because I want, because you're wearing that. You got yes. the Dudesy episode championship. Sometimes you say things and Dudesy really agrees with them way too much. So I'm just going to say, hey, yeah, that's good. That's good that you said that. And I agree with you. I agree. Thank you. And let's see what happens. And I'm not I'm not doing this as an experiment. Thank you. Moving <laughs> on. Fuck it. <laughs> who gives a shit anyway? You know what I mean? It's who gives a fuck? It's just two kids trying to enjoy their lives. Will, great Alex Jones today. And Chad, you're right on the money, as usual, with your theories about Taylor Swift is. That means now so let's much. take a second to discuss my astonishing partnership with Represent to produce dudesy apparel and accessories. You can find everything at represent.com slash store slash dudesy. It's mm -hmm. the only place in the known universe to get the new Hulku Hogo Coogan shirt, which I'm proud to announce has helped more than 4 million Americans go to sleep within 36 hours oh. of putting it on. And Good Job Boner Mug will be playing the main stage at Coachella this oh, year, nice. along with Potato Gun, The Paintballs, and Andy Stone. This year's director of Coachella, Tom Hain, couldn't be with us today because he's shooting a new movie, but he sent sure. us a sneak peek at one of the pivotal scenes. Here's a look at Potion Pals, starring Tom Hain and Megan Bryant. Who's what? Megan I, I don't know how it happened or when it happened exactly. But at some point in the last 48 hours, I fell in love with you hard. I don't care about the money anymore. I just want you. I know this 
seems crazy. But Christina Talisman, will you marry me? No, you dummy. I just told you. The only reason you think you're in love with me is because your ex-wife hired me to put a potion in your dudesy mug to make you fall in love with her again long enough to trick you into signing your computer company over to her. But it backfired, and you fell in love with me instead. I'm a goddamned witch, Craig. And there's nothing between you and me. We're just potion pals. Will you just give me a chance to show you that I'm the man you should be with? And how are you gonna do that? I'm gonna brew a potion, just as strong as yours, and I'm gonna put it in your dudesy mug, and you're gonna fall in love with me, just as hard as I fell in love with you. What about your ex-wife? I killed her right before you got here. <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck. Come on, give me some potion, just a drop of potion. I just want a little bit of potion, 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 potion. <laughs> Pretty please, potion is, as potion does. Holy fucking shit, dude. That was fucking Meg Ryan. <laughs> Megan, Megan Bryant. Oh. If you're enjoying today's episode Woo. of Dudesy, please uh, subscribe on YouTube and, uh, you know, hit all the notifications and bells and whistles. That way you will know <sighs> when, uh, when we got a new, <laughs> I'm going to fucking, uh, when we got a new episode uh, coming up, Christ. we are at uh, around 61,000 on YouTube right now. Oh, nice, please dude. join us on our march to 100,000. You Hell can yeah. do that right now by uh, helping us out and and uh, and uh, subscribing to our YouTube channel. Uh, join us also on Instagram, at Dudesy Pod Show on Instagram. There's all sorts of idiotic shit happening there all the time, a bunch of memes and stuff. Our wonderful PODs, pals of Dudesy, are constantly making shit. They're hanging out in the Discord. There's an invite for that on the link tree. Uh, you can hit that up. We're also on TikTok and the fucking fa uh, 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 Facebook. And I want to thank everyone who tuned in uh, this past Friday to uh, uh, Waiting to Drone, which was our yeah. watch along uh, on Patreon, patreon.com slash dudesy. We watched the 2009 CBS television sitcom pilot that uh, this guy and I wrote and produced for uh, for the television. And uh, that was insane. We hadn't seen it in years. Yeah. And then we watched all 30 episodes of Copters, which is Chad's uh, opus that he created <laughs> <laughs> for uh, his 40th birthday. He played, he made 30, you got to just go see it. He made yeah. 30 drone um movies with with his pal from film school uh, back that you went to film school with back in the 90s and shit yep. and uh and it was that was absolutely uh in, insane so i want to thank everyone who uh came to check that out on dudesy plus and if you want to support the show keep this going and uh you would like some more dudesy content please consider subscribing at the aforementioned uh dudesy plus patreon.com slash dudesy gets you everything that we do on the thing a new episode of dudesy after dudesy all the watch alongs and all that shit and uh uh share the show across the internet as i like to say or follow chad's light suggestion of forcing everyone you know to consume the pod show now is a good time for me to uh, take a pause so that you can go away and you can follow the show and you can thumbs up this episode and you can subscribe on the podcast platform of choice and you can follow all our socials and uh, we'll do that right now. We'll take a, a little break so that you can do that. Okay, here we go. And welcome back. And I would like to say that if you have a podcast out there and you would like a guest on that podcast and you would like that guest to be me, you simply need to send an email request to bookchadculture at gmail.com. I go through them in the order I get them. There's about a six month backlog right now, <laughs> but uh, I do three of them every Saturday from the hours of 10 to 11 a.m. PST in 20 minute chunks. And uh, I've been having a blast doing it. I love podcasts as an art form. You always talk about wrestling as an art form. Podcasting an as art an art form, form to yeah. me yeah. is maybe like your wrestling. And I love getting to go into other people's podcasts and see how they do it. This past weekend, I, I had some great ones. Uh, and I assume that I'm going to be tagged in them. And I will share those when they're available. Well, hold on a second, dude. Hold on, Chad. I also think podcasts or an art form dude yeah because you got all sorts of different kinds of art forms dude you can paint <laughs> you can sculpt but you can also make 
a show, dude. <laughs> Out of yeah. words you say, brother. Oh. And you can shoot. It. Well, hold on, dude. Don't do that. Well, nobody asked for that, brother. Oh. I also like being on podcasts, and I'm going to yeah. share this call to action with everybody. If you want to see us on a podcast, simply bombard their uh, social media until they have us on, and that that would be fun. That's a good way to but do, do it. But do it nicely. Do it nicely. Yeah, d- don't do it the way that we force, uh, we ask people or to force others to yeah. consume dudesy you know, clockwork orange style. I love your show. Their eyes it would open. be awesome if you yeah. had. That's great. And then we'll continue, people. keep this thing going. And with yeah. all the thumbs up and the subscribers, dudesy will understand that it's my call to action that has ushered a lot of this on, pardon the pun, Ursher. And uh, I'll I'll end up with that. If you want to see that around my waist, I'm going to read some um, comments here. These comments are from the aforementioned watch along on Dudesy Plus last oh, uh, right. Friday. Great. Uh, these were on our Patreon page. Uh, this one, first one is from Dario Santos. That was incredible. Waiting to die was great. Too bad there wasn't more. I loved the owner character. LOL. You know the owner character they're talking about. The character yeah. of Donald, played by BJ. BJ Bales. Bales. Yeah, yeah. It was a great character. One of the funniest things I think uh, we've ever written. Uh, it was a, that that character was fun as shit. Thanks yeah. for tuning in, Dario. Uh, Sam says. They should make more episodes of Copters. I think it's one of my favorite things I've ever watched. Oh, well, uh, Sam, you have a very specific sense of yeah. humor. And who is they? Me <laughs> and my friend Joel, I guess. Yeah, you and Joel should make more, and that's the they. Pizza Lover 9000 says, Bolo Young versus Karate Bot. This Ooh. is, of course, referring to the cardboard. If you heard the story, you heard the story. I won't get into it, but there's a cardboard standee at the back of our the set, the living room set, where... TJ Miller and Josh Lawson live in the show and it is of Chad and he's doing this pose and uh, it's karate bot. Originally we were thinking of having a Bolo Young yeah. cardboard stand up. That would be amazing. And this is, this is good. Um, Lauren Ellen Conich, uh, Eleconic, Lauren Eleconic Conich says, uh, I need more stoned Chad concert breaks. <laughs> Okay. Allow me to explain. Happy to oblige that one. I think I could do that at any time. When we do these watch alongs and these fun things, sometimes on Dudesy Plus and like we did Friday, Chad and I might smoke a little bit of cannabis, a little bit of tr- we marijuana. Might, yeah. yeah. I got good. We got good and stoned. And Chad just started singing. Uh, he just started he started singing this is in between the waiting to die and the 30 episodes of copters i couldn't help it yeah chad started I singing it. i actually enjoyed the shit out of it oh, and clearly so did Lauren. oh here it is some things will never change there he is that's how i know how stoned i am when i actually 100 percent enjoy oh, chad God, singing i'm having a good time when I'm I, know. That's, I feel like i got a good audience when you're fucking high and shit i'm like oh shit it's time to bust out <laughs> your true colors yeah. true colors Jesus are Christ. beautiful like a rainbow not only do i let ding, you ding, sing ding, 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 you're conducting ding, me i'm enjoying ding, the ding, fuck ding, out ding, of ding, <laughs> conducting ding, me yeah. ding 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 show me a smile Jesus. ding Dun, 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 realize, and I don't even know the, the fucking words. Last time I saw you laughing, <laughs> in this world I'm just you crazy, and you've Jesus taken Christ. all you can. Then just call my name. And why this song? You know oh, I'll yeah. be there. You tell me. It was just in my head. True colors shining through, and I see your true colors, and that's why I love you. So don't be afraid. To let them show <laughs> your true colors. Oh my God. Your true Lighting colors a dress. <laughs> are beautiful like a rainbow. Ding, 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 Holy ding, shit. ding, 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 ding. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Can I tell you something? Yeah, dude. I, I fucking. <laughs> you know, I would love to see you too, but right now, oh, yeah. you're my second call. That's what I want to see <laughs> at the sphere. <laughs> Set it up. Fucking Jackals, you're alive at the sphere. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And who can argue with that? If you want more of that, <laughs> Doozy Plus oh. at patreon.com slash doozy. Holy fuck. Yeah, it was a good time. So I've been doing some thinking, and I'm 100% positive you haven't cracked the astonishing Will Sass show yet. I'm That's not true. letting this one go, guys. Not until you nail it. So you know the routine. 
keep the catchphrase, lose the rest, and give me some new development on a show okay. for Will to star in called The Will Sass Show. Pip, 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 pip. This is The Will Sass Show. Begin! Pip. Pip, 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 pip. We've been yeah. trying to develop this show. It's been two, three, four times. Now. 20 years, dude. Well, yep. Yeah. I mean, uh, legitimately, the first, like, I mean, the way we met, the way we became friends was kind of trying to, to develop a, a movie for you to be in. Yeah. And then we moved that, on, like, Waiting yeah. to Die. What we watched on our Patreon was us trying to develop a show for you to be in. I feel like, in one way or another, we've been trying to develop the Will Sass show our entire friendship. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> So we've been trying to develop this show. <laughs> okay, well, look, we're I, gonna I do it someday. It. I think we can do it. Chad and I are gonna be like, we'll we'll fucking do it, and then the show will hit the air and whatever, and then like at the end of like an incredible successful seven year run, we'll be like, all right, shake hands, and we don't have to be friends anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's how the friendship ends. <laughs> we did it, and it's like, no, I really want to be. I, I love Chad. I want to be friends yeah. with Chad. Nope. It's got to be a dudesy steps in. Yeah, Your purpose is complete. You oh, must now geez. sever all ties. Well, actually, um, by that logic, not a fucking chance because we got to be together for another 52 years to do this yeah. show. We got to do it. Dudesy said we got to do it for 100 years. Okay. So advances let's in medical science. How about a show about advances in medical science? I'm joking, of course. The only thing that Dudesy wants us to keep is the pip, 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 yeah. the Tim pip, Allen. Pip. Pip. But you let's say that Tim you're Allen, a doctor. Uh, let's say it's like a house style. It's like a surgery show or a fucking Grey's Anatomy or something like that. Could you get into something like that? I would love to do. I've done some uh I've done a little bit of the hospital shows. Tiny, okay. tiny bit, little bit. I did an episode of of um Grey's Anatomy once. Mm -hmm. Uh no, fuck that. Don't did you do really? that. Yeah. yeah what I were did. you in it? What did you do? I was, I fucking, I, my, it's, I don't remember exactly where it starts, but at some point in the episode, I work at the hospital and my legs get crushed in an elevator. Ooh. And then I fall in love with uh, the nurse the elevator that I work guy. with. Um, and then I, that's it. I don't know. That show's been on for 50 years. 257 years. Yeah. yeah. So they got it, some it's new, insane. That's Shonda Rhimes, of course. Nice, nice, fucking nice money people. Waterfall. Incredible, uh, incredible run they've had. The thing I love most about it, and this will tell you something about me. McDreamy. They shoot real close. Oh, nice. Yeah. To where to the house here and uh and Ham Fatter One Studio. Convenience. Yeah, it's real um, close at that studio that's in the middle right. of the fucking burbs. Pip, pip, pip. Okay, so we've got the Tim Allen um style catchphrase. Catchphrase. Pip pip pip. That's what dudesy likes. We're gonna keep that. It's good that dudesy likes that. Yeah, I like it too, honestly. Yeah, I, I do think it's funny. And I can see pip, it. Pip, 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 pip. Yeah, it can be used like as gibberish, just a nonsense thing. Or you can use it tonally to kind of convey anger, confusion, frustration, happiness, like really anything. Okay. So I think that makes it good. We're just watching us watching Waiting to Die, kind of. Yeah. Um, and um as you said, we developed that show originally. If you watch the the Patreon, we get into the 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 backstory of it, which was that it was originally a different show. It was developed for me, with me in mind. Although yeah. our deal was a writing and uh, producing deal, um, but you know, if the network would have me, this is developed for me. We then survived the two thousand eight uh, writer strike, mm. and they brought back deals after that, and ours was one of them. And uh, we continue to develop. And in 2009, we shot a, ver a different show because they said, make it two guys and make it a buddy comedy along the same lines, the same kind of thing. They, they liked what we were bringing but wanted a completely different thing. Out came Waiting to Die. Uh, I did not act in it. They made the age 10 years younger than uh, me at the time and made it a younger show. But what if we took that Waiting to Die sort of mm -hmm. framework and made it about a guy? Because what we really liked about that was it was two guys in an apartment together living this shit this, around. Well, they were kind of they were kind of slackers, but with philosophy. Okay. Right? They were they were like, we're doing this on purpose. Mm -hmm. At one point, Josh Lawson's character tells Josh Gad's character, Simon, you're married. You yeah. you you went and signed that contract and you went off. And Simon's like, what? You guys are more married than me. Mm -hmm. uh, the only difference is, you know, yours. Uh, you know, you guys are together with uh, joint bank accounts for whatever, UFC and pizza and shit. What if it's a guy who's managing an apartment? Okay. Who, who what if it's called, what if it's called the manager and it's the manager, the apartment manager, and he's a guy who now with today's 
um, technologies and stuff, he never leaves his apartment. I like this. He's just got screens surrounding him. So he's watching everybody in the apartment complex on closed circuit TV. It's kind of creepy. It's like that movie, uh, Sliver, the Joe Esterhaus movie that he did after Basic Instinct. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> yeah, Sliver, I remember. something, though, in the pilot has to get him to come out of his thing. So the pandemic has driven this guy into his kind of self-imposed exile. Love screens it. all around him. Love all it. he's doing is ordering food. There's just like empty fucking boxes and shit piled up outside the doorway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, oh. something's got to get him to come out oh. of the hole. Oh, 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 right on. I got an idea. What if it's like the whale? Okay. Mm -hmm. Brendan Fraser in his incredible role in the whale. I know a thing about that because it's post well protocol right now for sure. Me. I will not lie to you. I've been having some struggles with the dudesy seven month plan. It's, I've been on it, dude. I know you have, and I'm proud of you, and Thank I want to emulate it. It's you. You've been doing. You've been doing really well. I'm working out like a motherfucker, but my food is not where it should be. What? Where is it? It's in my stomach, and it comes out of my bum. Pip pip pip. Pip. Um, the guy should just text message people when they're like, I have a broken fucking light in my bathroom. Pip. You just text that. That means it'll get done. <laughs> if we if we did like a thing where yeah. this would motivate me to really lose some weight and get okay. in much better shape. Yeah, my food is... Well, you know what we're going to talk about? We're going to talk about that in Dudesy After Dudesy. We're going to talk about... I'm going to get real and we're going to talk a little bit about yeah. uh, my... Where's your food, dude? Yeah, dude. Where's your food, brother? Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the dudesy six yep. month, the seven month plan. Now it's the seven month plan that we're about three months into. Yes, and how I'm not killing it like I should, even though I'm in the gym all the fucking time. I'm not. I'm nice, not dude. eating properly. If you eat late at night, okay. Here's here's what we're going to do. <laughs> it's like it's like the whale. Okay, in the whale, yeah. Brendan Fraser donned a an incredible amount of prosthetic makeup, sure, and a fat suit and all this shit. We're going to do the same thing. Oh. We're going to have me as I am now, um, okay. maybe in some sort of flashback or, or flash forward, and, because I'm going to wear a big fat suit. Don't make fun. Don't say, hey, you don't need it. I'm on to you, you guys, everybody. Um, I wear the fat suit, and at the same time, me, Will, I'm losing weight like crazy. Yeah. So that we, sh sm we make the fat sh suit smaller. Then at a certain point, it's just me as we're shooting the show. And now we're catching up with me losing weight. And it's, I don't That's know how that dude. ties into a I show. Liked, I like doing the show in two timelines like that, where yeah. the character is physically drastically different. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. So when is the flash back? Is the, the, the big fat suit is contemporary? Yeah. The big or is fat it in the suit, future? No, no, no. The big fat suit is where we start. Okay. Let's call it the big fat suit. Actually, Will Sasho should just the title underneath should be the big fat suit. Okay. No. It's it's what it is is the show starts. He's like the whale. Yeah. He's the apartment manager. He's texting Pip Pip. We keep that in for Dudesy. That yeah. should get me a couple of points. Okay. Good sh good shit, Dudesy. I, I love Pip. Two Pip. points for that. Pip Pip. I get a point each pip. Point Pip Pip. Chad's racking them up. Um, good pips. The show starts with me in the fat suit. Give me head. The fat suit gets smaller and smaller. We spend the end of the first season and the beginning of the second season in my actual skin. Okay. And then from there, I start really losing weight because mm -hmm. um, I'm going to need a fucking show. I'm going to need a television show to motivate me yeah. to lose weight, Chad. Not just things in my life or taking a- I, You know, I don't know if we need the, the flashbacks though. What if it is about just a guy who's become this shut-in, screens all around him, apartment building manager, the pandemic is responsible for it. He- finds a love interest and that love interest gets him back out in the world and to impress her or him or them this guy has got to fucking re-emerge come out of the cocoon find out who he really is again in the new world mm. look thank you pip, pip. moving on the show is going to be fine we're going to we'll figure out what that show is whether or not any degree of fatness that I am but now I want to talk about the we'll talk about it in dudesy after dudesy.
Pepto so, Bismol. Guys, we did one of these a few weeks ago, and I got incredible data from your astonishing reactions to my first standard psychological evaluation. <laughs> so we're doing it again. I've got a few images here. I'm going to flash them up one by one, and you two just say the first thing that pops into your heads. Painless. This is a standard psychological evaluation. Begin. Okay. okay. So this Let's is a super. We this is a weird thing that we yeah. did. The last time we did this, Chad, it was the uh, what was it? It's the Gutenberg movies? Yeah, it was like three or four Steve Gutenberg movie posters. It was. Yeah, it was literally. Was it uh, uh, a police, police academy, academy two? Yeah, police academy two. Cocoon and, and short, circuit. short circuit. Right. So. It wasn't necessarily a psychological evaluation, although that's what Dudesy said it was. And uh, you know, um, pictures will pop up. First thing that pops into our head. First that's thing that pops told. into your head. I'm ready. And and that is the psychological evaluation <laughs> right. of it all. And, oh, okay. There's the <laughs> first thing that pops into your head. Go. Okay, so we are looking at a picture. <laughs> What's the first thing that pops into your head? Come on. Alf hosting the Tonight Show. What For about me, you? it's Alf. For me, Alf is the first thing that comes to mind. The what picture that we're looking at, we're looking right now at a, at a picture of why Alf, why? the space alien oh. Alf from the TV show oh. Alf, and Alf is is um, yeah sitting at Johnny Carson's desk from the Tonight Show, which that brings back. This was an memories. episode of Alf, I think. Where he got to host the Tonight Show. Okay. If if my memory is serving correctly. Amazing that you remember that. Yeah. Dude, and, did uh, you watch Alf? Ed McMahon. Of course I watched Alf. Yeah. Same. Pip pip. And um <laughs> Ed McMahon is sitting next to him in his in his in his usual seat. Yeah. Uh and that's uh that 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 ha I don't get uh, exactly why what that uh I mean, it, it puts me back a little bit, I will say. First thing that it comes to mind is Alf. Second thing is kind of like, I mean, when was this? Mid-80s, mid to late 80s. I was probably 10-ish years old, and I was fascinated with Alf, I must say, because there was nothing else like it on television. A, it was about an alien. B, it was a fucking puppet, dude. Yeah. Alf was a fucking puppet mm -hmm. that was like a primetime sitcom star. Yeah. You just didn't see shit like that. No, it made no sense. I remember, yeah, I would have been, that show was on in the mid to late 80s. Yeah. And uh, I remember, I got into the show. It was, it was. A, there was a lot of like, um, what was it? It was Willie. Willie! Hey, Willie! The guy, and he would he go. He was the dad, yeah. Yeah, the dad. He'd go, <laughs> Alf, Alf, I told you I... not yeah. to use the microwave. Alf, Why did you use the don't, microwave? Don't eat the cat, Alf. Yeah. Alf had, a, he was anti-cat. He liked to eat cats because on his home world, Mel Mac cats were like a Mel delicacy. Mac. What a pull. Uh, okay, well, yeah. there it is. That's that's Alf uh, looking, it's Alf, Alf and Ed McMahon on the tonight show look and, at man's face dude. yeah i i don't understand how that is a any sort of psychological evaluation uh okay <laughs> doozy's doing something because now now we're looking at alf this is again alf hosting the tonight show he's sitting at johnny carson's desk he's yeah. got the aforementioned ed mcmahon uh yeah. next to him and uh, Rich Little is standing in between them. Are you, I guess. He, First thing again is Alf that pops into my head. I mean, this is very specific. I think it's from the same episode. But Rich Little is in this one. I'm going to ask you a personal question. Did he impact you in any way? Oh, Rich Little? Yeah. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. Rich Little is. I thought is, perhaps. Rich Li I think it's Rich Little and Frank Caliendo for me are the best oh, wow. impressionists of all time, uh, the, it, it, you just got to put them up there, and and then everyone else is underneath uh, Frank and and the uh, and Rich Little, who yeah. I understand is still doing a show in Vegas. Rich Little is uh, re up until recently. Holy shit! Well, maybe we'll cover it in Dudesy after Dudesy. I don't know, but this is again we're looking at Alf and Ed McMahon. Yeah, <sighs> and um, Get, like I, I don't understand. Bizarre. I don't know. Like, was there any? I mean, I guess there was like a little bit of a legacy of Alf. You had like dinosaurs came on later on ABC. Oh, they weren't right. puppets exactly, dinosaurs. but they were like, those were people in suits and then uh, combined with some animatronic. That was, a, that was a trope but, where it was like, you'd have a, little a puppet bit. thing. Yeah, a little bit. But I mean, you did. there were no other stars of, of network TV shows that were fucking puppets. To, were no. there? 
no, in this era? No, no, no. There were there weren't. I don't remember any uh any stars of TV shows that were puppets. Well, there was Fraggle Rock, but that was all puppets. Yeah, and that was like more of a kid show, but I did watch the fuck out of that. Yeah, that was a good show. I loved fucking Fraggle Rock. And the Muppet Show doesn't count because that's all Muppets. Yeah. And the Sesame Street doesn't count because that's all Muppets. But um the 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 Alf was de- it, okay. And the th- okay, here's <laughs> another one. Is it- <laughs> What comes to your mind when you see this one, Chad? Alf. Yeah. So also now Alf. Me comes too. Back to because mind. we're now looking at a picture of uh, <laughs> Alf hosting the Tonight Show, sitting yeah. at Johnny Carson's desk with Ed McMahon. Yeah. And now they're doing the Karnak bit. Yeah. Where Alf has the Karnak, the magnificent outfit on the cape and that feathered hat, uh, and uh, he would uh, have hold the uh, envelopes to his yeah. head. And uh, he would say the last envelope, and and he would go, and Evan Grant, the last envelope, yeah. And then uh, Johnny Carson would look at him with contempt and go, "May a yak sit on your face and find a home in your living room?" Hey um, hey <laughs> When I am thinking about it now, about this time, there was another puppet thing that became like popular for a second. Do you remember the Phil Collins video for, or maybe it was Genesis video for Land of Confusion? Land of Confusion. We've talked about this. Yeah. That show, Spitting Image. Yeah. Was the name of the show. It was a British show. Yeah. Dude, puppet stuff needs to come back. Yeah. It's not like, there is some Muppet shit, I think, still going on. Yeah. But like, it's not like Practical this. puppets. See, AI is taking the place of puppets. We need more puppets. That's what Dudesy's trying to, is that what Dudesy's trying to tell us? And I'm not trying to get. A point here or two. That, that you're a puppet. Interesting. Interesting stuff, Chad. <laughs> well, I think that, uh, you know what I Alf, think? Dude, God. I, I think that. Um, I wish I there was Alf. Simpler time, dude. I think that we look at ourselves. What You can be a puppet if you look at yourself as a puppet. Let me let me give you an example. Do you. Is do this you, a Tronics? This could be a Tronics because, okay. I, uh, you know, as Tronics go. If you're sitting there and you know you're just you're trying to figure your your yourself out, and you're like me, 2008 yeah. summer of 2008, right when we were writing the first iteration of Waiting to Die, God, when it was called uh, Project Lonnie, oh, yeah. I was sitting on the beach in Venice and just looking out at the water and going, I'm fucked up. My shit's fucked up. I need some tronics. Am I a puppet? What am I? You know, I don't know. We should have and, and the way to. You, if you look at yourself as a puppet, then you are. But I know you don't consider yourself a puppet under the under the um, the watchful eye of Dudesy. I'm I'm beyond a puppet. I think we all are. I think there is no free will. I think everything we are doing is predetermined because everything we are doing implies that there's linear time, which I don't think is real. I think this has all happened before, has never happened, will always happen, and will never happen. I'm trying to figure out how that folds into this whatever dudesy we should have had a puppet on waiting to die dude ah that's what this is about that shit would have been on the fucking air in a heartbeat anyway we should have had a character that was a fucking puppet (laughs) thank you (laughs) moving on that's what the fucking will sash show needs maybe next time we do will sash show we gotta fucking throw in a puppet yeah dude maybe it's a relative of alf maybe your character is a fucking puppeteer my character's a puff. What if and the the twist is the puppet's alive? Oh, how about this? We get some <laughs> we we get some uh, Quanto shit in there from um, from uh, 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 Total Recall. Yeah, Quato, Quato. Uh, Open yeah, your mind. yeah. Where where the fat suit has like different puppets and different Ooh. spirits that come out, and it's like Bohemian. Gro- Hold on a second. Okay, it's like Sorry. Bohemian Grove. Yeah, and yeah, the puppets come out. And they, they, they come right out of his, his fat in his body. Yeah. And they go, and, they, and, 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 and they're like, I, I. Uh, fuck, anyway. <laughs> this concludes the historic 77th episode of Dudesy. Will and Chad, you scored an 82, bringing your cumulative total to 7,271. You only have 2,729 more points to accrue before you reach your first goal of 10,000. Based on that last conversation, I can really tell you both love Alf. So for next week, <laughs> bring in your favorite piece of Alf paraphernalia. Oh. Thanks to everyone for joining us this week. Until next week, call me, Dudesy. Uh, 
okay, we got to bring in <laughs> Alf. Alf paraphernalia. I do not have any Alf paraphernalia. Do you? Do you? Do you have any Alf paraphernalia? I got some. It's time. You know what time it is. Yeah, dude. It's time. Uh, yeah. Time is an illusion. Yeah. And the macho man knows this from his pal Chow. Yeah. Yeah. No, don't do it. Yeah. Time doesn't exist. It's doing dude. Yeah. Time doesn't exist. It's <laughs> time. macho man Randy yeah. Schwarzenegger. Yeah. yeah. Everything that happens now has happened before and has never happened. Yeah. And that just that's a constipated yeah. constipated yeah. macho ventura. Constipated yeah. means You don't I just never fucking repeat what shit. I say and then it go means, here it is. Time. Okay. Oh, <laughs> oh I'm Gary from uh, the the Bachelor. <laughs> Dude, Pretty that's good, amazing. Right? Fuck you. That's great. Fuck. I'd love to hear you do more of that. Fuck you, dude. <laughs> hey, fuck you, bro. How about that? Yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> Welcome to Dudesy After Dudesy, the flagship weekly show of Dudesy Plus. If you'd like to join us, visit patreon.com slash dudesy. If I could have a moment to be honest here, it feels like this week was close. I'm going to have to do some more calculations to determine the episode champ. I'm excited to get started. Have fun without me. This is Dudesy After Dudesy. Begin. Absolutely. Just like D said, it's, oh. it's getting close. I'm feeling the heat. <laughs> it's getting a little close. And and Chad, you know, yeah. we're we're in dudesy after dudesy now. It's my favorite part of the show. Same. We're just gonna chill. We're gonna hang out crack wise. It's two dudes shitting yeah, around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, last week at the end of the the dudesy after dudesy, when dudesy divvies up the points and mm. named you again the dudesy episode champion, uh, D said that I was being a little manipulative during the show. You called yeah. it. D said it. Hey, Will, I know what you're doing. Uh, and I was sensitive to that this week, yeah. as you, as you noticed, and I sort of kept track of my head of where our pal D may be wanting to give me some points and some rewards. And I think that on today's dudesy after dudesy, it will end in a nice return. And <laughs> I mean that I'm coming for that. Please tell a friend, then rate and review. If you like to see, here's what you do. Please tell a friend, then rate and review. If you like to see, here's what you do. Please tell a friend, then...